everyone and welcome back to Jacket Educational Channel. So this is the part 5 for the Gate Ecology and Evolution paper and we are dealing with important concepts which came in the previous questions in this Gate paper. So if you haven't checked the previous part, you can check the link given in the description below. So let's see today's first question is, birds that are brood parasites lay eggs in the nest of other birds. So this is the kind of parasitism in which one bird lays its egg in the nest of other bird that is called as brood parasites and this is a successful strategy for the parasite only if what condition is seen in the host or parasite bird. So read all the options carefully and try to note down which is the correct option. So here I would like to say the correct option will be option number C. Yes, this successful strategy will be called as successful only if the host birds is not able to discriminate between their own eggs and those of the parasite. So if you are still confused with this strategy and all, I would like to tell you that this concept we will be able to know with the help of this small example. And let us assume these two eggs are from, one is from crow and the other one is from cuckoo bird. Why I am telling about crow and cuckoo bird? Because this brood parasitism is the best example seen in the case of a crow and the cuckoo bird. So what happens is the cuckoo bird lays its egg in the nest of the crow. So this you assume that this is the egg of crow and this is the egg of cuckoo. So what happens is the crow is misinterpreting the egg of cuckoo bird as its own egg and then the crow used to take care of all the eggs thinking that all these eggs belongs to that bird. But it is actually the egg of both the species that is the crow and the cuckoo. And as a result when the egg matures the birds comes out that is the brood which is the young hatchlings and then they live their independent life. So in this way the cuckoo is not able to waste any energy or time but the crow is able to share its energy, its food with the eggs of other birds. So this is called as brood parasitism in which the parasite is the other bird which lays egg and host is the bird which is taking care of the egg without knowing that it is not his own egg. So that's the difference in the case of cuckoo and crow bird which shows the brood parasitism. So this option was telling that if this cuckoo bird is laying egg and the crow is not able to discriminate between their eggs and the cuckoo bird egg then it is a successful strategy. So I hope you are able to understand this strategy. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is the Christian Bergman, a 19th century biologist, observed that related taxa showed increasing body size with the increasing latitude. So one explanation for this pattern is also called as Bergman rule. And what is this Bergman rule? So we'll know all together so first of all let us see which will be the correct option and here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, the lower surface area to volume ratios in the animals found in the larger areas which are found in the greater latitude helps to conserve the heat. So as a result this is stating about Berksman rule. So what is this Berksman rule? So to know Berksman rule you should also know there are five important eco-geographical rules. So what is meant by eco-geographic rules? That means in ecology, based on the geographical region, these scientists have divided and they have proposed certain rules for the different organisms present in the different geographies. Let's see what are these. First we will know about Allen rule, then we will go to the Bergman rule which we read in the question. So what is this Allen's rule? So read this table very carefully, I will tell you. Allen's rule is the rule given by Joel S.F. Allen in 1877 which states that animals adapted to cold climate that means in the cold arctic region mostly we have taken they have shorter appendages and shorter limbs. So he is telling that the organisms the animals which are present in cold arctic region they have short tails, short ears, short legs and they are snout in structure. But similar kind of species found in the equatorial region they have long or large tail, ears, body and appendages. So this is as per the Allen's rule. What does this Berksman state? Berksman stated that 
the animals which are present in the cold arctic region they have large body so there is a very minute difference between the allen and bergman rule allen says about the appendages ears legs and other body parts but bergman says about the complete body part so he is telling the body part of the organism present in the cold region is large and the organism which is similar to that species and staying in the equatorial region is having the small body compared to the cold arctic region one more thing bergman stated that the surface area is two that is divided by volume is less in case of animals present in cold arctic region so this means they are the adaptation for losing the heat that means they don't want to lose the heat because the temperature is very cold they want to keep themselves warm that's why their surface area by volume ratio is less so kindly note it down this is very important next thing coming to the jordan theory so jordan ecogeographical rule states that the fish in the cold arctic region have more vertebrae column yes as you can see in this picture this fish is having more vertebrae column as compared to the fish which are found in the equatorial region they are having less vertebrae in their vertebral column next important ecogeographical rule is glogger rule so what glogger says glogger says that the organism or animal present in the cold region they have light color or they have less pigment on their body compared to the organisms or animals present in the warm region that is equatorial region they have more pigmented and colored next thing is wrens this theory proposes that the birds are having narrow wings in the place of cold arctic region or cold antarctic region whereas in warm region the wings of the bird are comparatively wide in size so these are very important try to make this table in your notes which will be very very helpful let's move to the next question let's read the question first the question is again about birds and the question is the birds show much variation in the sexual size dimorphism so what is this sexual size dimorphism it is the body size difference between the male and the female that is sexual size dimorphism which is hypothesized to be associated with their mating system so the hypothesis is there that it is associated with their mating style and mating system so we have to match with the birds that is the two groups of mating system along with the size dimorphism according to their male and female so here i will tell you one by one which will match so first is monogamy so you should note one thing that these terms are also important monogamy means when one male is fertilizing or having the sexual reproduction with one female so in this case what happens is the males and females are having more or less similar size so there is no size difference in case of monogamy next coming to the polygyny polygyny means gynoecium you know in the flower that is the female part so female are more that means one male with many females so in this case what happens is we have to match with the p that means in this situation males are having larger body compared to the females so it is the hypothesis next coming to the polyandry so andry means from androsium that is the male part in the flower so poly means many many androsium means many males so one female with many males if they are having sexual reproduction mating system then in that case the females will be having larger body size as compared to the males so these are some of the important terms and the hypothesis based on the sexual size dimorphism which you should note it down because the questions can come from here with some or other twist so in this video we have learned some of the important things such as the five eco geographical rules allen bergman jordan glogger and rens rule and we also learned about brood parasitism and last we learned about the sexual size dimorphism so i hope you have enjoyed the video and if you like this don't forget to subscribe the channel see you guys in our next video